Tonight, chaos erupting as there are many areas to watch across the Northern Hemisphere. And now, the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for June 28th. Well, it's a doozy, as though it may not seem like it yet. We have two tropical cyclones, or potential tropical cyclones for that matter. Celia continuing to persist in being alive. It's now the fifth longest TC active during the month of June. We also have PTCO2L. Uh, that was estimated by the National Hurricane Center earlier. It's expected to become a tropical storm tomorrow. It's day 28 Atlantic hurricane season. We have 2L there, and it's expected to eventually strike into a hurricane before making landfall in Nicaragua by the end of the week. We also have two other areas of interest, one in the Gulf of Mexico and one in the main development region could also develop in the coming days. In the eastern Pacific, there is Celia there. It's expected to finally die out soon. I know I've been saying this, but it keeps on wanting to persist. We also have another area of interest that is now Invest 94E. There's a 30% chance of formation on this 45th day of hurricane season as it continues to move westward. In the Western Pacific, we have Invest 97W, which has a 50% chance of forming as it continues to head towards China. Uh, looking a bit disorganized right now, but we'll see what ends up happening there. 98W, chances of forming are 20%, although that's not going to be until a later period due to close interaction with 90, 97W. In the North Indian Ocean, for some strange reason, an Invest 94A was designated, but as we expected, it has zero chance of formation. Uh, not sure why it was designated, it looks like complete garbage, and there is no way this thing is going to be forming. Moving on into our satellite imagery, you can see how potential Tropical Cyclone 2L is progressing. It's been not getting itself consolidated, it's more or less just firing more and more showers and thunderstorms, but not doing anything really in terms of its organization for the short term here. Uh, much of that is probably going to be uh, tomorrow and into Wednesday. Looking at the satellite imagery, uh, you can see what's going on in the Atlantic side of things, and of course we have uh, 2L there with the wave behind it that is going to be our next AOI, and even behind that is another wave, so we have a lot of waves coming in. In the Eastern Pacific, you can see what's going on in regards to cilia, which continues to persist and refuses to just die in general, and you can see what's going to be our next area of interest, 94E there, uh, to the south of Mexico. In the western Pacific, you can see the mess that's going on between 97W to the west of the Philippines and 98W to the east. It is just a elongated and large mess, and that's pretty much the best I can describe both of these at this point. In the Arabian Sea, you can see 94A there, which basically lost every single ounce of convection earlier today. It basically means nothing now. They have been continuing on with its monsoon activity, so pretty much another normal day in the North Indian Ocean. In the southwestern Indian Ocean, Madagascar remains dry, and everything remains confined north with no chances of anything developing anytime soon in this region. Moving on over into the Australian region in the South Pacific, not much going on. There is some activity going on uh, that's been affecting northern Australia the last few days, but other than that, nothing that's going to be developing into any tropical cyclones here either. Here's a look at sea surface temperatures, and you can see the Central Pacific is still around 25 to 26. As you head into the eastern Pacific, those temperatures are around 28 to 29 across the area of south of Mexico, where Bloss and Scilly have tracked over are a bit cooler. Gulf of Mexico is around 29 to 30, Caribbean is looking around 27 to 28, so you can be stead for the main development region and into the western Atlantic. And as you head into the subtropics, it's around 25 to 26 throughout the majority of the basin. And that's pretty much the gist of that at this point. As we head into the Bay of Bengal region, it's around 28 to 29 degrees Celsius across the majority of the bays and with a few isolated pockets of 30. In the Arabian Sea, it's around 28 to 30 degrees Celsius there, and in the Western Pacific, it remains around 30 degrees Celsius as the most uh, common sea surface temperature in the South China Sea. As you head eastward, those temperatures slowly decrease out of the 30s and back into the upper 20s and near the Australian region it's around 26 to 27 degrees Celsius, with temperatures decreasing to 25 to 26 as you head into the southwestern Indian Ocean. As we look into the sea surface temperature anomalies, you can see the Atlantic is still above average as usual, 
in the Western Pacific, it's also above average, especially in the South China Sea. And the Bay of Bengal and Arabian Sea are also looking above average, with the Eastern Pacific still looking, for the most part, below average. Uh, especially thanks to that cold neutral that we're currently in right now. Here are the ocean heat content. You can see the Caribbean continues to see areas that are just growing in ocean heat content, especially to the south of Cuba. We still have that random death spot of OHC uh, in the eastern gulf, and in the western Pacific you can see that everywhere east of the Philippines is just primed with ocean heat content there. The eastern Pacific still lacking entirely in terms of that department. So with that being said, we're looking at the models now. A lot to get through with the models with all the chaos going on, so I'll get right into that. Here is what the Atlantic is doing in the 18Z GFS, uh, courtesy of Tropical Tidbits. Uh, let me make this the right wind settings for once here, uh, since I usually haven't. But there you go, now you get a better idea. Uh, but this is what the GFS does as we head into the 18Z run. Uh, pretty much develops both ways, but it takes way too long to develop uh, the uh, potential Tropical Cyclone 2L there. Pretty much having that other wave get itself together before uh, 2L does, which does not seem right. Uh, GFS has treaded way too far south, unrealistically south, uh, and therefore they have a weaker system hitting into Nicaragua, and then of course the tropical storm hitting Puerto Rico from that uh, AOI that is behind uh, 2L at this time. After that, they continue to have it going north, and eventually uh, that's pretty much it. Um, which is a bit surprising. Um, this is not exactly a run that is probably going to verify what the most likely scenario is, is that it remains just north of the South American continent and does end up becoming that hurricane and there is that chance of course uh, that it does cross over now. While it may have been in the silly ranges last night, it looks like more models are actually uh, coming on to that possibility now. And in terms of the Eastern Pacific, you can see what's going on with that. Um, Cilia being initialized too strong as usual. Uh, for some reason it looks like they decided to put me on the analysis side of things, that's why. Okay, so this is what the actually is going to happen. Uh, Celia will continue to weaken, spin up to a remnant low, uh, and it doesn't look like there's much support for that uh, uh, AOI behind it. Um, nonetheless, it could become a brief, a weak tropical storm. Uh, GFS drawing out its existence way too much, and pretty much after that there's really nothing going on beyond that point. Uh, so pretty much after the 4th of July, we are looking at a lull in the uh, Eastern Pacific. And the Western Pacific, uh, it's a bit more realistic here at least. Uh, we have the tropical storm forming out of 97W, eventually 98W becomes something as well. And of course, we see the impacts for Japan and South Korea. Well, China also sees some impacts, but thankfully we are dealing with more of a realistic type situation here. Uh, where it makes landfall uh, as a category one and most probably high-end tropical storm based off the pressure relationship. Uh, so we're not looking at something as bad as what we have been seeing, uh, but it is worth noting we'll get more into that once we get to the longer ranges. And then, last but not least, we have the North Indian Ocean because we have 94A uh, there. And you can see uh, in the analysis side of things you can't even see an LPA. Guess what? There's still no LPA. There is still nothing. There is still nothing. And guess what? There is still nothing. And this is why we have a 0% chance on yet another useless invest appointed by the Joint Typhoon Warning Center. Huzzah! Not sure where there was a chance at this morning. There was never one to begin with. Here is the longer range, and things continue to stay a bit interesting. After the landfall that we see in Nicaragua, the wave that's behind uh, pretty much dissipates over the mountainous terrain of Hispaniola. However, what's left of it seems to still remain, given the fact a new tropical storm spawns out of it, and pretty much is to the east of the Bahamas by hour 240. Whether that happens remains to be seen. We don't even know whether the wave is actually going to develop into a tropical cyclone uh, at this time, so put that with a bit of grain of salt, but this time we're not seeing uh, that play, play out. In terms of the Western Pacific, that's only the other thing that's got um, things going on but between hour 120 and 240. Uh, you can see what's going on, that landfall at 984 millibars in China, the remnants of 98W pretty much passing through southern Japan, and after that there's really not much going on uh, for at least a few days, although it looks like there is potential for uh, more storms to form. Um, afterwards and it seems the run hasn't finished loading out on my end. Uh, so that's something we'll cover on the silly ranges I guess. 
here is your shameless plug. If you are way too addicted to us, you can visit our Force 13 store where you can request animations, buy our merch, and get everything that has some random Spinny Cloud logo on it uh, that legit says Force 13. You can even buy pillows. We love those. We have two things to look at for the silly range today in terms of the GFS side of things, and you can see that we're starting off with the Atlantic. Uh, because it looks like that storm does not die after stalling out for days. It seems that it goes back up north and eventually decides that it is going to hit Nova Scotia, Newfoundland for, you know, racing off as an extra-tropical system. So that is, uh, somewhat interesting. Don't think that's gonna happen considering the fact we don't even know the way that 020 is gonna form and that's what would have to happen in order for that scenario to play out. It would then have to die. And considering the fact that's like stalling for three days, I don't see that happening. Now, the Western Pacific is where things are even more hilarious, and you can see why. After this little weird elongated mess comes out of Japan, we have two more systems trying to fight for dominance. This doesn't exactly end well with the two going their own separate ways and both becoming typhoons. One just sitting there and doing nothing for days upon days upon days while the one on the Western end becomes a 940 millibar super, uh, ty well, not probably it's not super typhoon, but a normal major typhoon. We've also got another tropical storm forming and heading up northwards, and by hour 384, you have three freaking typhoons going on, one that just won't move, one that is just rapidly intensifying near the Mariana Islands, and one that is just chilling off the coast of Vietnam, so, um, yes, welcome to another weird situation in which the GFS basically wants the Western Pacific to be way too insane. Typically happens at this time of year, and I just don't see this happening, you can just throw this 18Z runoff as per usual. Looking at the on this day for today, we're going to a very, very bad year, 2005, a year that everyone likes to compare active hurricane seasons to for no good reason at all, but on this specific day, we had Tropical Storm Brett, which formed and became the second storm of the very active season. We also had Kelvin, which was fighting for its life and would basically die and sit there as a remnant low for about a week and a half further. Other than that, there was nothing else going on in this day, and we know that about two months from now, things are really going to be getting horrible in that specific year. You can find more of our On This Day products powered by Cyclone History. You can find them on the tag below. Looking at the next names, the next name in the Atlantic, we could be getting it soon, is Bonnie, followed by Colin. In the Eastern Pacific, we're looking out for Darby and Estelle. And in the Central Pacific, while people may be worshipping and believing in Honeyism or whatever, that's still not enough to get us Honey, and we won't be getting it anytime soon. In the Western Pacific, the next name is Chava, followed by Irie. And in the North Indian Ocean, the next two names here are Citrine, followed by Mandis. A reminder that we are Code Blue due to Invest97W, and we'll be shortly Code Blue thanks to uh, 2L impacts expected. In the Australian region, we're looking out for Dorian and Ellie up next. In the southwestern Indian Ocean, three nights left to say the Lama is up next. And in the South Pacific, it's Holly. We'll be back for another Truck Weather Bulletin tomorrow night while keeping you updated on everything that's going on in Storm Updates.